Welcome back to the channel. This is Simon Cromer and today we're going to be doing our first maintenance wash on this 2019 Chris Craft Catalina. So you guys have probably checked out the entire series. This is just another part um, towards the end. And this is actually post Hurricane Ian. So this thing is covered in salt. Um, so we're going to want to give this a good wash. We definitely want to throw protection on it. And we're going to kind of wrap this up, make sure everything looks good. So but the first thing we're going to do is we are going to be using um, ceramic DNA. So we have Detox Smart Soap. Um, and you can actually purchase this. I'm working on a deal right now with ceramic DNA to get them to give you 15% off. So guys, we're going to be getting a 15% off deal where you can use my code just as you do with Start Got Care and you can get 15% off any of their maintenance care products. Um, and this is a great one here. So we have Smart Soap, which is a silica shampoo soap, which is very similar to, you know, Stark's version of their silica or SiO2 infused boat soap. So all this is gonna do is add extra slickness. It's gonna be a non-stick type of soap that's going on your boat. So does this actually add protection? No, it does not. So don't think that you can just get away with using an SiO2 soap as your protection for your boat. You're gonna wanna, um, continue and carry on with a more you know stronger product something that's going to last a little bit longer whether you're going to use reboot or in this case we're going to be using regenx which is ceramic dna's version of an actual protection a polymer protection that goes over top of your ceramic so we want to make sure that we're uh, keeping up and doing all the proper things as we uh, maintenance this boat throughout the year and we want to make sure that the coating lasts as long as we can get it to so we're here in bradington florida going to be getting a lot of sun no canopy we're really going to get to see how long does this stuff last um, and what actually happens when we do routine maintenance so it's going to be a really cool experiment with this boat and super excited so we're going to go ahead and pour a little bit of this stuff in the bucket and we got our hose right here And this is the first time that I'm using this product. So we're gonna get to see what it's about. I've actually never used an SiO2 soap before. And again, like I said, don't think that you can get away with this as your protection. Yes, it might have a little bit of SiO2 in it, but it's also pH balance. It's cleaning the boat. There's not gonna be a whole lot of protection that comes with it. So obviously keeping your boat clean is an extremely important part of this whole maintenance process but we want to make sure that we're cleaning it right we're keeping dirt free because if we're keeping dirt and grime and salt off the boat that's already going to be a huge step um, forward in protecting your coating but beyond keeping it clean if we can add extra protection like a polymer um, and regenix is one of the best ones out there and i'll explain as we get into using that after the wash i'll explain why um, and it's really a one-of-a-kind type of product so um, I'm very excited to start using this and hopefully I can get you guys, you know, you're going to get that 15% off and you guys can use this on any, any of your ceramics, whether you're using Stark, G-Technic, right, IGL, um, Underdog, really any coating out there. This is a great protection to put over top of that. All right, so we've got a good amount of soap here. Uh, really quick, we took off the seats in the bow. I'm going to wash those real quick and then we're going to start up. We always start on the top, we work our way down. So we're gonna go to the hard top, right? So it's basically the hard top. So we go top to bottom, front to back. So hard top, bow, all the way to the transom, and then we get onto the hall, and we're gonna begin in the water. So um, pretty exciting stuff. Let's go ahead and uh, head over this way. And basically all we have today, are, because this boat has the 1% detail, so everything is coated on this, from the vinyl to the bright work, um, everything. The entire outboard unit so we don't have to use a magic eraser we don't have to use a degreaser the non skids coated all we have to do is use we have this SiO2 soap we have a hand bit and we have our blue shirthold brush and that's all we need guys it's really simple um, the advantage of ceramic coating your boat like this is the maintenance it makes it super easy to wash super easy to clean the only thing that's gonna take some more time is drying the boat because there's gonna be so much water left over and there's nowhere to the, for that water to go because everything's coated so um, really a great thing that that's what you want on your boat you don't want your you don't want your fiberglass your paint drying up super quickly that means it's not protected so we're gonna you're gonna get to see all this today you're gonna get to see the beading and um, yeah let's go ahead and wash this over here real quick So you guys can see, these are completely coated. Co 
coating on vinyl, coating on braid work is going to wear off quicker than on your gel coat and your, your solid surfaces. Um, and that's just normal, but while it's on here, it looks great and we're just going to keep up on it and I'll give you guys updates on how long this stuff is lasting and when we need to do a reapplication and all that stuff. So this definitely restores a ton of color. Um, if you have your bow out in the sun, ceramic coating, it helps a lot. All right, we got our little soap. have to do any aggressive cleaning because there's nothing going to be sticking to it anything that's sticking is actually sticking to the coating and it wipes off right away We always want to do external pieces first before we wash the boat because this gives you the chance to let everything sit out in the sun and dry so if we if we were to wash this last um, and we dry it we're gonna have to wait an additional time for all this because you got to think the cushion um, you know it's got a lot of depth to it there's a lot of foam there's a lot of things in here so it needs time to air out time to dry in the sun so we always wash the external pieces first make sure all the water's off it the best we can And we let it sit in the sun just like that. All right, let's get inside the boat and let's get to it. So as we come up to the bow, uh, the first thing we want to do is just give everything a good rinse, get um, all the initial dirt as much as we can off of the boat into the drains and out into the water. So here we go. As we come up here towards the bow again, uh, we did do, so you're gonna notice we coated all of the compartments from the hatches to the actual backing, to the sides, to the actual compartment. Um, everything is coated and beating really nicely. And, you know, especially in the hatch tracks, it makes it super nice because everything's just gonna flow off. You know, your drainage system's gonna be really well after you coat it, because everything's gonna drain towards the back of the boat. Nothing's gonna be sticking and, um, 
you know it's a really cool thing to see especially as a detailer when you're washing the boat um, and, and everything's you know everything on here is beating so really cool experience and a really easy experience for, for somebody who's washing the boat whether you're a boat owner a detailer um, the maintenance on a, on a coated boat like this is just so good to work with no heavy scrubbing you don't have to you know worry about removing mold like we don't have to remove mold or mildew we don't have to get out of degreaser it's just a simple wash and you know it's going to save us time it's going to save us time in the long run so let's continue and let's get all the dirt off the boat He hasn't used the boat since we did the detail and you know we can do all this by hand we can regenx all this by hand but it's not dirty so we don't have to actually like wash it but everything else you're going to want to wash um you know from the seats to the bow to the outboard like everything else is good but this is all good we don't really have to wash under the hard top because again no sun no really chance for dirt to get up there so we'll just run regenx on that and um or we'll do a uh, We'll come by with with a uh, you know a detail spray and we'll just clean it really quick and you don't have to actually wash it so Let's just get this final seat right here. Look at that bee. Extremely cool. Alrighty, and we're good to wash. So we're gonna hop up here on the hard top. Uh, we're gonna keep this here for now. Top's got a good scrub. It's crazy. A lot of people neglect the hard tops, and you know that's where you're gonna get a lot of sun. You're gonna get a lot of bird droplings, and you know it's gonna go go really bad really quick. Whether it's non-skid or you're smooth, it's gonna get out of hand really fast. So it's always good to do uh, protection. And you know we did two coats up there, 
and we did Infinex on the non-skid and we're good to go so make sure making sure everything's protected right this is a newer boat and the more we can do to it now the better you know this boat's gonna look in the future 20 years from now the longer the owner can keep the boat and you know a lot of owners don't understand the part of restoration right they think once the boat's old once it's oxidized it's time to get rid of it get a new boat but here we're going to show you that this is not the case so uh you're going to be seeing more videos on this and i'm going to keep you guys updated on this boat in particular because you know it's one of the ones that we're going to be doing every month and we did everything we don't always get the one percent details a whole lot because they are a big investment and they're a big investment to the boat and to the owner and we're going to see how it goes We don't have to rush to wipe this off or to, um, to spray this off because there's nowhere for the soap to go. The soap's just gonna sit on the coating until you spray it off with the water. So, you know, you have an hour or two uh, before anything would dry up. doing a lot by hand so we'll start up here Once we get that code working, you guys are gonna have to get uh, Luminex because this stuff is great for your metal, great for underneath here, even great for your compartments. Uh, easy protection, great ceramic wax. It's hard to find a good ceramic wax on the market that actually works and actually has, you know, the durability. So, you know, I would stack that up, you know, close to, you know, something like a Jess car, really. So, you know, it's a great multi-versatile product and something that's great to have in your arsenal. So definitely something I would look into getting uh, once we get that code up and running. guys want I have a few other videos on washing boat washing you can check those out I'll throw those up on the screen this is probably one of my first actual like maintenance videos and I'll be trying to get some more of those in the future for you guys because you know a lot of you guys may maybe are starting to do the detailing now but you may not understand the whole maintenance process and what's effective what's not effective so we'll be trying to get more content out on that You know, for the most part, boat washing just comes down to effort and making sure that you're paying attention, attention to detail, make sure you're not missing anything, but you know, it's literally soap, soap, water, wash the boat.
I'm really not a huge fan of these marines so he has like this marine flooring and um, you know I'm not a huge fan of that unless you're gonna be replacing that like every three years it causes a lot of problems once the underneath part the black part of the uh, you know underneath of the flooring once that part starts to kind of fade and start to um, disintegrate you know it, it's a pain for your non-skid it gets you know it stains in there and it's really hard to remove so you know in my opinion that stuff kind of hurts the non-skid in the long run although it's protected from the sun it's getting a lot of damage from uh, that carpeting and you know you're gonna have mold build up and all sorts of stuff so you know if you got if you have your non-skid coated I recommend you just you keep it out in the open keep it free keep it um, in the air and you know that's really the best way to do it and it's protected it's gonna be clean if it's not gonna look dirty uh, you know it's gonna be easy to walk around so that's kind of a preference but I see a lot of trouble with those marine flooring with those mats and you guys probably know what I'm talking about buckets and stuff uh, you know on your vinyl because when you do that and you have a heavy water bucket like this it's gonna leave a circle staining and we don't want that so you always be be sure that you're not sitting this up here for long periods of time hours uh, you're gonna run into issues with vinyl you're gonna see circles and all kinds of stuff and it's just gonna damage it so always put you know your bucket and anything heavy on a hard surface like non-skid or you know compartment right Let's finish up this other uh, sidewall and then we're going to give this whole front part a, a good rinse down.
that'll be good for now. I usually just like to, first of all, I split the boat into sections, right? A, B, C, and then the hull. And I like to kind of like, once I'm done washing, I like to give everything a quick rinse. And then once the whole boat's finished, I'll come back and give everything a really good rinse. Just make sure everything's clean. So, um, other than that, we're gonna continue. They said we don't really have to wash this upper part, but we will wash this lower part down here. Now the teak, you can wash just really lightly pH balance soap only, never anything aggressive on the teak. That'll definitely strip off the coatings a lot faster. This part here is a little dirty. Let's get that. All right. The seats, the seats were covered. I know they're not dirty. I'm not gonna wash those. Not necessary. All right, um, we'll get this side. We'll get this half real quick. It's a little dirty. Get under here real quick. All right, 
hatches real quickly. This is just the engine hatch. strange entrance to a boat but I don't know if I like it or not I feel like if you're older it'd be really hard to lift up because it is a little heavy um, and then check out this hatch this hatch is a little strange so on the Chris Craft Catalina this hatch is like a hatch for the swim ladder and you know I'm not really a huge fan of it because it sits into this you know it sits in this compartment here and you know if your drain is clogged or you know, it's just really moldy or something in here. Um, you know, this is gonna get pretty rough condition pretty fast. Like this is gonna rust really fast. I don't know that I like this setup a whole lot, but this is what we're working with on this. And like I said, I've never seen this kind of setup before, but we went ahead and coated everything. So we should be all right, but, but yeah, definitely not my favorite design. You know, I suppose since they had the teak on the back, maybe they just wanted the boat like to have a sleeker design. So they didn't want to put the swim platform with the hatch. You know, instead they just did the all teak and then this kind of left, you know, this was left with the, really the only option to put the swim ladder. Alrighty, and let's give this section a good rinse down, and then we'll jump to the transom.
All right, let's lower these units and get the track that the outboard's sitting. that will that will do it for now so let's turn off the power real quick now if you remember we coated all the hoses all the brackets so everything's nice and protected I'm not sure how high the water got um you know this is more north we're in Bradington, cape coral and fort myers obviously got all of the surge and this kind of got probably wiped out a little bit but i don't think it got too high because the boat wasn't really dirty the back's not dirty and i don't see anything you know staining on the outboards although they were raised up so that's good i mean we're about i mean this is probably seven seven or maybe eight yeah maybe eight to ten feet above the water so that's good they didn't get too high of a surge over here so it definitely looks a lot better like the trees and stuff like it didn't seem like they definitely got hit but not as bad as cape coral Okay, let's go ahead and get the floor. So we always do the deck left. Now we do have a little bit of that, you know, that marine flooring, the black stuff on the rug, on the flooring kind of coming off into the non-skid, but it should wipe right off with the coating but let's see all right we'll start up on the bow like we always do The old fashioned way is the best, but I am more of a fan of the sea decking than the, the marine form.
gonna put this off the boat, give our final rinse down. And the top side is finished, so all we gotta do up here is dry everything. I'm not gonna show that on video, but uh, we're gonna have to wash the hog, gonna have to uh, gain the water. I know this video is like over an hour, so we'll come down here and I'll show you guys kind of what I'm doing for the haul, but we're not gonna be able to get it all on video. It's gonna be a two person type of job with the raft and me having to wash, so. Um, I'll show you the part from the back though, so let's go ahead, get this a good spray down. Now what I want to do to make this a little easier is actually raise up the boat a little bit. And this is going to be the one time we will exchange out the water. But it's not very dirty, so but it's pretty clean. Don't have to use much, get away with a little bit. Alright, we'll be good here. Happy we got a little bit of dock space. Makes it nice. It's hard to do these bones in the water because you, you know, you're not, you can't actually uh, tie up against the boat because it's on a lift like this. Unless you're to lower it way down, um, you know, it's actually harder to do a boat like this on a lift in the water than it would be to, you know, for somebody's boat to be in the water but tied up to a dock. This part is dirty right here. I'm not sure what happened. All right, we're gonna have to get the, the brush. I think we'll be good on this side. I don't think we'll have to get in the water over here. And I actually have an idea. We might actually not have to get in the water at all. Okay, so we're gonna give this a rinse down. Now on a color like this, you do wanna be more rapid with the spray off process because the sun will dry water spots no matter if you have a coating on or whatever, unless you have 
you know, 100% free decontamination in your water, you're gonna have spots. So try to get this off as soon as possible. And then we will wanna dry this first before we dry anything else on the boat. Now the nice thing with black paint is if you keep up on it, it looks incredible. Um, it looks amazing, but you know, when you don't, when you buff it with the wrong products, don't protect it, it gets pretty rough pretty quick. Paint gel coat doesn't matter. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go on the other side. So we're gonna go in the boat and I'm gonna lean over the edge. So in the past, I've actually washed boats leaning over the edge and I think we can do that for this boat. So we're not gonna have to get in the water right now. So that is amazing. So back on the boat we go, uh, gotta lower it down.